So this episode is going to be about damp proofing, how to damp proof your house. Well, not how to damp proof your house, how we damp proofed our house. Or we hope we've damp proofed it. Um, it's very complicated and I couldn't find any information on the internet about how to do it. So um, hopefully it might even be useful for someone to see it in action, the damp proofing. Basically, it's like we're damp proofing a basement because the walls outside are underground. And then also lots of other stuff. First floor's in. So now we um, have an upper floor, which I don't think we had last time. Um, and you can see how it's constructed out of what you wouldn't think it was constructed of. You might be surprised um, to find out what the first floor is made of. Um, and then we've got the internal walls which Ben has started on. So yeah, very exciting for us and um, lots of interesting conversations about what kind of insulation to put inside. Should it be wool? No, because that's too expensive. Should it be the normal PIR stuff? Yes. But is that breathable? No. Oh my god. <laughs> Is our barn. Welcome to the next episode of the making of crab apple farm. So this is what Ben's done basically all around here in this bottom room which will be the pantry uh -oh. Uh -oh. and all along here and all at the bottom here all that sort of underground. Well that back wall's not underground but that is going into what will be outside sort of partly underground. So anyway, this stuff, you, it's just like plastic. It's just plastic, but the, there's different kinds. So you can get one for above ground, which is less expensive, but I guess it's just thinner plastic. I think this maybe is just, I don't know, but I think this maybe is just, it looked the same on the internet, but this one is for underground, which is what we basically are. It's like basement. Because outside there, that's just underground. Up to about here, which is why we put it up to here. This is just like egg box stuff, and then you put it so the indents are on this side, and then it protrudes that side, and then the water hopefully sort of get, gets cracked by it, and it runs down. And um, in our case, because we have quite a lot of water, um, we have quite a lot of water coming out of the walls, especially on the lower half. Um, We've got this drainage system, which is actually really annoying. This is the most annoying bit. So it is. Whoop. This bit, I can't remember now why I got it really, but it said it was like, if you're going underground too much, then you need an extra condensation gap or something. I don't know. But anyway, under here, I all the disc screens taped up. Um... And under that is these white things, which I'll show you a bit of. It goes all the way around. And then the, the channel, it's going to go outside in two places. So this one's going to run all the way here. Blah, 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 we hope. <laughs> blah, 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 and then outside. And the way that works is, that really confused me at first. I thought, I thought it was just going to be a, um, like a pipe or something, but it's actually this, which is, comes in two metre lengths, and um, on the bottom, it's got holes, like at the side there, and then at the top as well, and at the back. So if the, you put it in the ground, and then the water gets up to that level, and so once it's got to kind of inside here, it just like... You, you put it so it's a bit tilted, like not massively tilted, just enough. And then the water, like, because it's, I think it's because it's flat surface, I don't know, it go, it like goes, it just feeds away and then it's off. So it runs down here and then if, if the water table ever reaches high enough to get to here, in the, in the ground obviously, it like goes, goes off, it goes off. So I think the idea of this is, is like stop it coming in, but also, oh, it's taking it away because there's so much. It's taking it away. 
Um, and then we've got little jetting eyes everywhere again. You're supposed to put one in every bend. And then they are quite expensive, but I did do that. So that every now and again you can flush it out. I also don't believe this was featured in the last video. This is a giant wall that has been built by Ben. And this is going to be the fireplace. Apart from that back behind of it. Ugh. It's really annoying getting around here. Ow. And this is the front of the fireplace with also some scaffolding in front of it. Um, and it's going to go higher than that. Here's one steel beam, which goes into the wall. No, it doesn't. It does not go into the wall. It was going to, and then it did not. Um, it goes, look, it attaches there, and then it goes, ah, it goes to the floor. That, oh, and then that, that whole floor bit's going to be sort of where the stairs are, where it goes down into the floor there. So the steel beam up here, along, goes into that wall there. And then we've got another steel beam, yeah, that goes into the fireplace. And then I think, I'm pretty sure that's a steel beam under there as well. Oh, that's a steel beam under there as well. Going all the way through the fireplace. So that's what's holding up the upper floors basically. So also with the underneath of the floor, how it's held up, it's betwixt. So every bit, every sort of section has got a bit of steel. Big, I don't know what it's called, but a bigger bit on the wall there. I think you can see it more in the kitchen area. And then um, buttons or whatever they're called going across. And then those are just noggins again, noggins. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm just worried, like, what if that rots? But I guess it doesn't. Yeah, on this one, you can see, so it's got steel beam on that side. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. With wood in it. And then more wood attached across. Noggins. Check out those noggins. <laughs> And um, on this side, it's just wood, just a big bit of wood. Welcome to the guest bedroom. This is how walls work. We've got a wooden C16 wood um, stud walls. Sometimes people have a stone, no brick whatever, concrete slabs as the inner bit wall. So you put these um, downy ones in and then uh, you put noggins to brace them and then they're, they're all attached together, whatever, I don't know Ben's doing it, but then in betwixt these we leave a gap um, between the stone on the outside and the insulation that we'll put on the inside. And hopefully that will allow the walls to breathe and what have you. And the water to come in and then go back out again and not touch our insulation. So we are going to have 50ml of PIR insulation on the inside and then another gap. And then all the electricity back wires and what have you gets attached onto this woody bit. And also the pipes somehow. We'll see next episode. Um, and then there's another gap of air. And then, I think, and then the plasterboard just goes right on top of here. And we're going to have foil back to plasterboard so that it is waterproof on the inside. So that water doesn't go in. We don't want house water to go through the plasterboard into the insulation. The other option was to get something like wool, but as you've seen downstairs, we've already got a load of plastic everywhere, which is obviously not breathable. So half of it wouldn't have been breathable. And you're not supposed to mix them. And also wool is like a million pounds, apparently, even though it's worthless. What? So yeah, Ben is doing this and this has taken him. 
Not very long. And ooh, we're currently deciding whether you've got to insulate around the windows. I think you do because of reasons of heat bridge. And this is the hallway. And this is the toilet, which we're going to have terracotta floor tiles. <gasps> Look at this. The big ones. Um, the small one looks a bit small. And then this is the probably what's going to be our bedroom. And it's got really high, really high windows. I don't really know why that's happened. A bit high. Well, I think it was in the plans. That's what it's happened. There's our lovely arch, and there is the mezzanine, which is going to be the third bedroom, but it's now just going to be a mezzanine. Okay, I'm just showing you on the mezzanine. Whoa. Quite nervous about going across here, actually. Oh. Okay, I'm not going to go around. I think I'll fall off. But um, there it is. Mezzanine. The stairs are going to be here. And you'll come up. And we've just been deciding on the lighting, which is very fun.